It's a very impressive range you have, but do I actually need all of them? Yeah, that's a very good point. If, if you're not working with any diamond, there's probably a couple of items that I would suggest would be absolutely superb to get you started. Um, one in particular, which is the diamond credit card stone. This is a fine grit on this side, 600 grit, 25 micron. This side is 340 grit, 45 micron. If you just feel that. Yeah, it feels quite fine. Yeah, turn that over and if you put your nail on it, you can feel the cut of that yeah. and the difference in the coarseness and the fineness. Yeah, it's really cutting, isn't it? Like yeah. You can feel it. But although it does feel quite smooth, it cuts very, very quickly. Now, if you can imagine, I would suggest that everybody needs one of these in their toolkit. If you're out working on site and you haven't got the ability to get to a grinder or to a bench stone or something like that, that is absolutely superb for putting an edge on a chisel or a plane blade or touching something up. And it's such a useful thing to either have in your pocket or in the tool bag. It's absolutely it's brilliant. That effective, is it? Well, let's show you how it works. I'm coming down here now, Bob, if you can zoom in on this. But Bob's our uh, underpaid cameraman. So this is a piece of carbide, and I'm just going to place it on that just to give you an idea of the power of cut. So here we go, just forward and back. Look at that. That's and that's how quickly it cuts carbide. Tungsten carbide. Yeah, absolutely remarkable. So let me ask you a, let me ask you a question. Do you use any router bits? Yes, I do. Yeah. And do you send those away, throw them away, or? I have tried sending them away, but it's quite expensive to get them resharpened. And to me, they seem to take a lot of material off, mm. often reduce the damage of them. So to be honest, I tend to just buy another one. Yeah, yeah. Obviously a rich man. Uh, I'm coming <laughs> over this side now, Bob. This is, uh, I'm just going to explain what this is. This is a petroleum-based lapping fluid, which Trend recommends for their products. It is petroleum-based. It has been used in engineering for over 35 years and it is a very, very fine oil. It is absolutely superb. It's not cheap, but with this atomizer top, I would suggest that that is all that you need when you're working with it. And with average use, I would expect you to get close to 12 month use, even out of that sort of size. Even with bottle. regular use, yeah. And even with the cost of it, I would suggest that working that down per week, you're probably looking at probably less than 50 cents a week. Right. So it's absolutely peanuts. Yeah. I'm a great believer, if you buy quality product, look after it the best way you can, and you'll get a huge life out yeah, of it. Get the most out of them, yep. The biggest thing is, is that you must not use water or water-based products on these stones. Well, I've seen right. people using water before. You don't do that. No, you don't do that. The thing is, is that, as I try to explain, when the diamond is set into nickel and then electroplated onto the surface, inherently, nickel is porous. If you use something water-based, you're going to get a rusting problem. Right. This prevents rusting and stops it clogging. Right. If you want to use water, I suggest you go and wash your car. <laughs> anyway, going back to your outer bit. So... What I suggest to people is, depending on what quality of router bit they're buying, is I would actually sharpen them from new to make sure they're as sharp as the manufacturers want them to be, because then they're working the most effectively. Right. Where people tend to go wrong is when they're using a router bit and it tends to get a little bit blunt, and they're, oh, I'll just leave it one more time, I'll leave yeah. it one more time. <laughs> Or then you have to send them away, and as you rightly say, they grind about 30 or 40% off the face. I'm going down to this corner now, Bob. So, quick spray on that. And what I like to do is just, I'm working on the fine side. If you're working with a lot of carbide cutters, I would work on the fine side. If you're working with HSS, I would work on the coarse side. Right. Although very few cutters now are HSS. Yeah. yeah. So I like to actually place that on a work surface like so. You're totally in control of that. And then with your cutters, you always sharpen from the flat side. Okay. You never touch a profile side. So that way round, they're fairly easy to sharpen. So I just come in from here, and there it is on the flat side. And all I'm going to do is rub it forward and backwards four or five times. That's how quickly it cuts the carbide. Turn it over, do exactly the same on the other side to keep it in balance. And you've sharpened it's your cutter. As simple as that. It is that simple. If you just feel the edge on there, it is very, very keen. Well, that, <laughs> that's a sharpen that quite dramatically. But the thing is, is that if you do that regularly with your cutters, you can actually get 
10 times more life out of your cutters. Mm. Keep them sharp and they will go on and on and on. Well, it's that simple to do. There's no reason not to, is there? It's not a problem. It's not a big job and not a big setup to do it. So oh, very that's, impressive. that's things for the arouse bit. <clears throat> so then also, as I was saying, if you're out on site, if you'd just like to pass me a chisel. Again, if you're out on site, I have to get my glasses on for this one. All right, come in here. You can see when you're on the right angle. And all you're doing in a very light motion, for, it cuts forward and back. You can see exactly what I'm taking from that edge. You can hear edge, it cutting, can't you? Edge already. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely remarkable. And yeah. then obviously flat on the back and just take off a burr. So if you can imagine when you're out on site, having the ability to re-edge a chisel like that, to me is absolutely priceless. It's fantastic.